This is the Nexigo Aurora PJ90. It's an ultra short throw 4K laser projector and it may well be the most feature packed but at the most budget price that you can get. So let's see whether this thing is any good and take a closer look. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. So coming in at just over $2,000, this is the more budget end of the 4K ultra short throw laser projector market. But when you read the features list, it certainly doesn't look like a budget projector. And in terms of its aesthetics, it definitely doesn't look like a budget projector. In the box, you get your user guide, the remote control and a power cable. These projectors are really simple that they don't overcomplicate you with loads of different leads and things. Now, this is the star of the show. And boy, this does look like an incredible machine. I think it is probably up there amongst my favorite 4K ultra short throw laser projectors I've seen this year. It certainly looks incredibly stylish from every angle. I love the fact that the speaker bar on the front is that two-tone of grey and it does contrast brilliantly with the matte finish of the actual projector. So these things are designed to be on display, so why not make them look great? And this one certainly does. On the back of your usual connections, there are just two HDMI ports, that's something for you to bear in mind, but one of those does double up as HDMI arc. On each side of the projector is a chrome dial so that you can raise the feet if you need to, and also on one side is an extra USB port. The projector comes with a very simple remote control. Unfortunately, it's not backlit, but it's got a few function buttons on, but there aren't any shortcut buttons. Okay, it's about time we fired this thing up, and I've purposefully chosen to fire it up with the window blind right open, so this is in the middle of the day, so you can appreciate how bright this is. Now at 2,500 ANSI lumens, this should deliver a good picture, even in daylight. And as you can see when this actually kicks in, it is. It's very bright indeed. Don't worry about any flicker you may see on the screen. You don't see that in reality. That is literally just my camera frequency, and it's not quite on a par with the frequency of the image. The projector does have the built-in security where if you get too close, it will automatically disable the light source, which is a nice feature because this is a laser light source at the end of the day. Now, in terms of the settings, I would say that this is probably a little bit on the basic side. There aren't that many different modes and you can't make so many changes that you can with others. However, for the majority of people, the settings that you can change is going to be adequate so that you can hopefully get the picture suited to your preference. I had mine in custom mode and found that that was the best and just made a few different changes to the settings below. Right, in terms of setting this picture up, then having the keystone correction, either four point or eight point, means that you can drag the image to fit the screen. This is the type of projector that I definitely recommend you use an ALR, an ambient light rejecting screen, because it does reject the light to the side and above and also it just absorbs the light better on the screen which gives you a brighter image. There is also electronic focus which again is very easy to operate just by moving it side and side. This does have MEMC which is motion enhancement motion compensation which fills in frames to give you a bit of a smoother image in some scenes. Now some people don't like that it causes soap opera effect but for me I just tend to turn it off and occasionally very occasionally turn it to low. The rest of the settings are very simple, it's laid out very clearly and it's easy to go in and change. The Aurora runs Android software and it's got quite a good operating system. It reminds me quite a lot of Apple TV where you've got all of the different, different thumbnails below and you can then go into the settings and the apps section up the top. It would be good to have some more shortcut buttons on the remote control but that's maybe a wish for a future update. But using these is absolutely fine and for the majority of people it will be no problem at all. So this is the picture quality during the day with the blind open. And as you can see, it's pretty good. It's not bad at all. It's very bright and very vivid. And as I lower the blind on the right hand side, you'll see that the image does start to get better and better. There's still a light on to the left of the screen, but it's giving you a great image now. And as you can see, those colors tend to pop. I do think that the color representation on this projector is pretty good. Contrast, however, I found it a little bit heavy on the contrast. And so that's something I definitely recommend just dialing back a bit in the settings. But other than that, the colors were pretty accurate. This has got 121% of the REC709 color gamut, and it does come across well on screen. 
Speaking of screen, I've got this projecting onto a 100 inch ALR screen. Now you can go up as high as 150 inches and we're literally just a few centimeters away from the wall. And as you can see with this technology, it just is brilliant the way that it produces that massive image from just a few inches away. To give you some more detail on that, if you want a 150 inch screen, then it will be 1.61 feet away. A 120 inch screen will be 1.12 feet away. And if you bring it right down to 80 inches, then you just can be 0.46 feet away from the wall. Now onto image quality. SDR content is handled really well with this projector. It feels very natural and is not over-processed. Certainly in terms of saturation, it's definitely not oversaturated, and I think most of the images look true to life and natural. And again, I reflect back to the color tones, them giving you a much more crisp and natural image. We did mention earlier about the contrast, and this is a demonstration of where the contrast can seem slightly heavy. But again, you can dial that back in the settings. Now with this type of projector, black levels are quite difficult to handle, and they definitely feel a little bit raised with this projector. However, it's not too noticeable, and if you're in a dark room, that doesn't really come across as a problem at all. What I would say though, is if you put an HDR source through this projector, then it does take it to another level. The image that you are able to achieve definitely feels premium and it doesn't feel that this is that much of a budget projector. Now there are some areas which we've already discussed where you can definitely tell that this is a little bit of a cheaper one, but in terms of the image quality with a high quality source, I don't think there's going to be that much difference between this and one maybe a thousand dollars more expensive. For you 3D fans out there, you'll be pleased to hear that this projector also supports 3D at full HD. So again, that's another feature which you wouldn't necessarily expect at this price range. The projector also supports Dolby Audio Sound, but as I do say with every projector review that I do, I do recommend having a separate sound source if you're spending this type of money to get this huge big screen, then really you need to go for surround sound. A 5.1 system, or maybe like a Sonos system, which is what I use, that is ideal for this. But this does have two 15 watt bass speakers and two 15 watt tweeter speakers, and so therefore it does deliver pretty good audio, and it's definitely one that you can get away with watching normal TV with, but if you're watching a movie, you definitely want to crank the sound up and have a separate system. Now this projector, as I mentioned right at the very start, is actually very small, comparing it to a lot of its competition. It's just 45 centimeters or just over one foot eight inches, and it's just around 35 centimeters deep. So it doesn't take up that much space on your unit either. Now I'll cover off a couple more of the specs in just a second, but I do have to say in summary that this does represent incredible value for money. It certainly doesn't feel like it's on the cheaper end. Some of the image quality is incredible, and I think the design is one of the best I've ever seen. It doesn't matter that this is a cheaper projector. So here's just a recap of some of the features with this projector. The lamp life of that laser light source is 25,000 hours, which means that you could watch this for four hours every day for 17 years. The two and a half thousand ANSI lumens means that you are getting that great image, whether it be during the day or at night. A lot of these features are quite common on most of these type of projectors, like the four and eight point keystone correction. This does have that smart Android TV system built into it, so if you are looking for an all-in-one, then definitely that's something to bear in mind as well. And I found that the color accuracy was great with this projector. In fact, the only thing, there's just the one thing that I didn't like, and that's easy to fix, and that was the contrast, it just being a little bit heavy on the contrast. Everything else with this projector was really, really good. I have to say, I'm mightily impressed. Now, I may well do some comparison videos with this and some of them more expensive range but i'll let you know on that so keep an eye on the channel let me know what your thoughts are on this projector and as always thank you so much my friends for watching and i look forward to seeing you on the next